I think it caught really nice. The discharge was crazy. Dude, I think this thing cut better than the bigger skank. Dude, that thing was discharging like crazy. You, it was just launching it out the side. That 36 inch cut, yeah, better awesome. than the big one. Make, 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 make the ground shake. Hey, what's up guys? Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. Today we have another special video for you guys talking about standout mowers. And honestly, this is going to be a video that you guys have requested a lot from, which is smaller mowers for gated backyards. Hanging out with Stan and Ed. Ed's gonna be leading the conversation here because quite honestly, this is something that you guys keep asking me about with uh, gated backyard lawnmowers. Ed's got a couple of them here we're gonna talk about. Maybe you can talk about the pros and cons, uh, what you know, some of the benefits of these units are, and kind of who's uh, making some good ones and some things to steer clear of. Sure. Yeah, so the, it's about 36 inches typically, and a 36 inch gate oftentimes is a 34 inch opening. Okay. So a lot of these machines are 36 and a half inches wide if you like measure them like literally the width of it. The cut is 36 inch. That's pretty common no matter what you're buying. Um, so they're still pretty heavy duty. You know, the, the prices don't go down low compared to some of the lighter duty units, um, but it's about that backyard. Once you get through that gate, the productivity you have, the jobs you can get and not waste time on, sure, is really worth the money. So what is it, the smaller blades that discharges easier? So the, these smaller decks, they actually have pretty long blades on them. And uh, Corey, how long is the blade for a 36? 18 inch. It's what, 18, 18. inch? It's what's on a what? 52. Yeah, so. Wow. And, it, and you don't have as long of a deck that it's all trying to get through. Man, it's just so ejection. discharge is easy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it cut. It, it cut really nice. You think it was about the same? Yep. I think these are uh, these are adorable. Like they're 36, so you're like cute, compact, keep them with you, you know. Well, how, did the, how did the cut quality look too? Same. Same thing. Yep. Very similar. Yep. Well, except, except we didn't have to pull start this one. Yeah, I was just gonna say, <laughs> it's the little things, right? That's cool. No, this well, is a... sometimes when when you br break all the big things down and there's no difference, then it boils down to the little things like who's your dealer gonna be. Right. I mean. And how does it feel? Like, so how do you feel when you're doing this right here? Th these are uh, still kind of throw me a little bit because everything else I'm used to like pulling forward to yep. go forward. But it's you know again after five or ten hours you learn and you're, yep. you're back in business. You know it's not a it's not a make it or break it thing for me. I'd I, have to agree 100% on I, that point. I, I personally wish that anybody who has the handles that kind of jut out a little bit they had um, you know a different kind of def, uh, deck lift assist because if you catch a tree branch on stuff like this that's probably the only like little thing. But um, like on the Toro Grandstand, for example, that was one of the things I didn't really like because it just sticks out so far. But beyond that, I think it's a, it's a tank. I mean, you can tell it's built well. It's a solid little unit. I didn't I didn't feel like it was uh, as finicky as maybe some of the other ones. So. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Two thousand years later. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. I don't even have. Can Brian start a Skag V ride? Well, uh, God, we would have been here for two hours with you. So this is the 36 inch though. Yeah, we're dead. Yeah, he was pulling. I remember, I'm not gonna pull on that. Where did he pull, where was he pulling? On the puller. On the puller? Right here, dude. Oh, really? Yeah. What? Well, yeah. I haven't pulled a lawnmower <laughs> in eight years, man. Hey, Ed, how do you start a skeg? It's so hot today, you don't need much choke, so it was over choked. No, Less it wouldn't, choke, it started there was no electronics no, involved, no dude. No we couldn't even get the meter to read. Yeah, no, it, it won't because there's no battery on it. The, uh, I'm sorry, what? The generator has to start running before the, anything will happen. What kind of wizardry is this? What? Yeah, it's old school. What? 
We still make a lot of recoils. They're they're, they're, old school. they're five hundred dollars cheaper, and there's less to go wrong. But it's sort of a thing that's phasing out. Phasing out like in two thousand two. <laughs> it phased out 15 years ago, I'm brother. 95 degrees out. We'll sweat our, sweat our butt off, man. You know what's the right worst now. thing, Kay? You're in a trailer, you drove this thing straight in, and now you want to start this. So you're in there, you're climbing over stuff, and you do this, you pull this, and you, you hit your elbow oh, God, yeah. on the wall, right? You sound like you've That'll got experience you with that. It, you'll just be done. You'll, you'll be, be done. Like, you'll, never, you'll never buy one of them never. again. Hold on, hold on. You know you got to recoil. I'm not. <laughs> uh, Stan goes, which mold do I use? I said, you get the skag. Yeah, throttle. I knew why you said it, too. I knew why, you, as soon as you said it, I, I'm like, ah. Half throttle, no choke. I think it caught really nice. The discharge was crazy. Dude, I think this thing cut better than the bigger skag. Dude, that thing was discharging like crazy. You, it was just launching it out the side. That 36 inch cut, yeah, better awesome. than the big one. So some things to really look for in a, in a 36 inch mower, you want to be able to get this deck real close to the corner. So you want this wheel as far back as possible, brought in. Um, so that one's a little bit closer than this one. They're both pretty good in that aspect. Um, you want to see the machine fully fold in within the width of that. 36 inch opening so our chute's kind of rubbery enough we fit up underneath there um, John Deere is selling the same thing which is our older design mm -hmm. the similar product line it has a plastic chute that actually hits here and so you can't get it through the opening so that's where you'd want to look at maybe a chute block off or something uh, in order to deal with that situation similar here right so this is going to hit here that's really not going to work going through the opening gotcha so again Go. chute blocker or, or a mulch kit uh, is, is something you'd want to look at. This design, Ed, Brian, and everybody out there, is I've, I've ran right for about a year, and this is nothing more than a scaled down version of the monster mower that yep. I used. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything else seems to be pretty much the same. Is that right? Yep. From an engineering standpoint, yep. do you just take that super heavy duty components and just yep. squeeze them down into a 36 inch? Yep. Because when I'm looking at this mower, I see quality in this and in the skeg. Mm -hmm. I see it yeah, in both, both heavy mowers. duty, right? I mean, I actually see more quality in these gate mowers, to be honest with you, than I do in the medium light duty you know, mowers that we've got over it's there. It's because the kind of guys buying these, right? The right. guys who are buying this are doing pure commercial work. A lot of these will last six, eight years. Oh, You'll see a lot of these out for a really long time. Yeah. Well, that, like you said, now these units might be eight, nine, 10 grand, but at the same point, when you're doing a bunch of residential stuff, you can't be necessarily toting around a 21 inch push mower or 30 inch push mower. No. Not if you wanna get that productivity in and you wanna make money. And you can have those little units, but some of those little smaller mowers, they're kind of throwaway units. Yeah. You get a year or One two year. out of them. Yep. Top, yeah, yep. tops, you're replacing parts. These guys, uh, for, for 36 inch gated backyards, well, you just have to get into that opening. In some environments, some like for me personally, I don't have a lot of gated backyards, mm -hmm. but that's not everywhere part of the country. You can go 30 minutes uh, south yep. of where I live, and it's 80% of the homes are gated backyards. You need stuff like this, part of your equipment yeah. setup. Everything's shrunken down. So you know the, the, the way these, these control linkages work in here, that's all similar concepts, but the rods are shorter, the things are narrower, tank's a little bit smaller. Everything's just shrunk, but same stoutness, you know? Okay, so let's talk about the skag. What are the good things about the skag? So still a lot of very similar theme in terms of how this work is done. If I had any, the layout's good. I like that right here. Mm -hmm. You know, deck lift, parking brake, and all that. Mm -hmm. If I had a complaint, it's the the width here. So if the ground's not level, 
through the gate, this is going to hit the edge of the gate at the top. You need that machine to have a taper to it and actually uh, get through that opening, right? That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's got a lot of the good qualities yeah. that Skag has in yeah. there. And, and we know that Skag has built a pretty good mower. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think one question that I have was, do folks want to invest in a unit like this versus throwaway units year over year? Because maybe you don't have seven, eight, nine thousand dollars you can dedicate to a unit just like this, especially when you're starting off. You know, you're yeah. trying to buy that that main staple piece of equipment, your lawnmower, whether it's a zero turn or a stand on. It's a 52, it's a 48, or it's a 60, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. I think uh, one question I have for a lot of people is, would you guys prefer to use mowers like this or use throwaway units like a Toyota Time Master, uh, Honda a little HRX lawnmower, or something like that, where you're just going to burn through them? You know you are, and that's okay. We have equipment we just burn it up and throw them out. Or are you going to invest the eight nine thousand dollars like this and have it for the next ten years? I think that's a really good question. If you guys have a good uh, input on that, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. When you're starting your business, you start with something like this. You build up, and then your that's next fair. mower is a fifty-two inch, and you start with mowing residential lawns, sure. and then when you get that big account, right. then you invest into a bigger piece of equipment. That's so a great this point. opens more doors. Let's get you close. started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that's. I, I'm a fan of these. I, I like these mowers. I think that, I mean, and these are both good quality mowers in my, yeah. my opinion. I mean, I tell me, tell me right or wrong, your opinion, when you first touch these mowers, mm -hmm. Do you feel like, yeah, these are good quality, and then when you touch some of the oh. other mowers over there, you're like, yeah. come on, let's go over here real yeah, quick. Because we'll I'll, I'll tell you straight up, I would take one of these 36s totally. over any of these. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, I personally feel I personally feel that if you're going to be playing in this industry, um, you know, don't cheap out. There's things to cheap out on and be conscientious about, but when it comes to something that you're gonna use every single day, this is your number one tool. This is your This is what makes you money. And, and one of the things these guys want a more in-depth review of this these these equipment yeah you guys can go over to mine because we did this bobcat we did the huskavarna uh, ed, ed did the huskavarna i did the huskavarna and then what was the other one hustler, hustler. so the if hustler. you guys want more information stop over there you guys sure because we did that walk around because we're talking about the quality of these over here but hands down if it was me personally i would invest the extra thousand two thousand dollars into one of these whatever it's going to be because this this is your workhorse this is what's making you money if you had to buy a 36 inch skag or right mm -hmm. or a 52 inch bobcat mm -hmm. or hustler or husqvarna sure. you would pick a, a smaller unit i would those are two thousand hour machines we we figured right ed sure okay yeah. what are these you know, if you if you keep replacing the engine when they wear out, they'll last a really really long time. You know, if there's no. I'm I talking about exact same circumstances. I've seen eight, ten, twelve thousand hours on on some of these smaller units. Is that right? Usually they're on their second or third engine, but they just keep going. Okay, but wouldn't you be the same with that? So you could, but the thing is that when transmissions go out, there's such high ticket items, it's not worth it. Right. You're going to give it up. The the failure is going to total the machine. It's like okay. when I got a three hundred dollar trimmer and it cost me one hundred fifty bucks to get it fixed. Yeah. You just buy a new one. Buy a new trimmer. You know what I mean? You know mm -hmm. how it goes. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like I'd rather you, you know spend a couple extra minutes on this unit to finish up a property than to have something that's breaking down. So let me get back to that breaking down thing. I would say that there's a lot. I mean, I'm an engineer, equipment. I, I love to talk about the durability. We do things to make it reliable. Okay, but at the end of the day, yeah. it has a lot to do with the dealer quality of the dealer you're working with, is that warranty subject to all these exclusions and manufacturer's defect, sure. or are they gonna look out for you when it's not doing what you thought it should probably do? And it's Great reasonable, point. right? You Great need point. a manufacturer to back you. And so, um, for the most part, part, a lot of the equipment we're looking at here is pretty well supported. Sure. But the quality of your dealer, the level of support they're giving you is super crucial. Totally. And that's why, you know, I don't recommend jumping town to buy a mower. Yeah. Buy a mower from the dealer, you have a relationship and build that relationship because when it goes down, you need him, yep. you need him. There's a symbiotic relationship there. Okay, well that's that's a good point, They'll but if you're getting you. a mower that has inferior components that you know are going then to be even that much better of a dealer. <laughs> or just kind you of You need stay a away good mower that. to begin with and a good deal. Yes, that's right. the key. Yep, that's, yeah. where, that's where I always tell people to start. I have, I have a lot of videos on our channel that, that you guys can gain resources from and playlists and if you're shopping for mowers, we have in-depth reviews on all these. Stan's gonna have some on his channel as well. But it's always gonna start with dealer. Don't don't shop by paint, don't shop by features necessarily, like you said. Start with your your, your use of transmissions, mm -hmm. actually. Start with the, the cutting, the transmissions, your dealer, and then go with, you know, some of the other features that you might be looking for. Because if it's not moving, you're right. not making money. Yep. 
Perry in case yep. close. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. So thanks to Stan for hanging out with all of us talking about the gated backyard lawnmowers. We had a good time shooting this. But I will tell you guys this, we're doing a whole video series here with all these lawnmowers. There's so much more to check out. So the next thing that we covered is the medium or the 52 inch mowers. And we broke these into two categories. We broke them into medium heavy duty and light heavy duty. So if you're interested in those, Come over to my channel because we've got the right, we've got Ferris, we've got Toro, Xmark, Skag. It's gonna be we've awesome. We've got every medium heavy duty mower there is. And then we also did them on the light heavy duty, which is Bobcat, Hustler, and Husqvarna. 